these films are very important uh, and, and thank you uh, Ilham for giving us the opportunity to screen it uh, the interesting thing uh, is uh, Chitu who now, who now works with Ilham is actually the filmmaker of the first film Benusa Tana yeah thank so uh, <laughs> together with Hilary so uh, please uh, a clap for him yeah and the uh, second film, uh, Gap, together with Albert Bansa, is the filmmaker. So we were both very happy that you're here. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Gap. Yes. So uh, maybe we start with uh, Chi. How do you feel after 16 years uh, watching your film? <laughs> um, it's always very awkward, actually. Because, um, you know, this is 16 years ago and just purely from a p filmmaker perspective, um, you're just looking at like, oh my God, what did I just make? <laughs> like, you know, you, you think like, the editing could be a lot better, like uh, the pacing feels terrible, everything just feels terrible, because, you know, it's 16 years ago. But, you know, but, but what was made was made. Um, and and I personally, I still feel like it was important that we have made that film at that time. Yeah. So um, can you just tell us the why, why, how did that film come about and maybe a bit um, about the Ajang now, if ever, yeah. So this film came about, this film was made in 2007, yeah. 2007. Um, at that time, this, this film came about because um, prior to that, the year before, um, we were commissioned by Greenpeace um, to do a fact-finding mission in the Ulubaram area. Because um, then the blockades kind of started happening. There were news of blockades happening in the Penan areas in Ulubaram, and 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 you know, and at that time, Greenpeace had a very active sort of like a research team in Malaysia, and we, me and Hillary, we were kind of um, asked if we can just bring a camera into Ulubaram at that time to just have a look at what's going on, gather some data. Uh, shoot a bunch of things and sort of like do a bit of video report on what's going on in Ulubaram. And from that trip, um, we kind of felt like there was an urgency to sort of tell the story of what's happening um, as it was breaking at that time. And so about a year later, after much planning and much, a lot more research, we returned to Ulubaram and was hooked up to Ajang Q and a few other people. Um, and by then, there was already like 10 blockades happening in the Ulubaram area, Ulubaram and the Midobaram area. So this film came about, yeah. So um, any updates on uh, the struggle and the uh, Penang community there now? It's been a very long time. I think maybe Gab is much better at answering this question. But um, one of the very disheartening things I found out, and this is years later, uh, probably like in the early 2010s or mid 2010s, um, when I last heard from our friends in Sarawak, was that Ajang actually Ajang Q, the protagonist in the film, who was the president of the Sarawak Penan Association, and Gap can correct me on this. I was told that he actually now works for the company as a community lobbyist. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it sounds terrible, um, but, but I think from the film also we can see that, you know, there are a lot of things that visually kind of don't make sense. I don't know if, if you've observed, um, and I deliberately included all these things and just made sure they were there um, in terms of how if you look at the blockades are not like the blockades in the 80s where you literally block a road. It's a permanent blockade where nothing passes through. Um, but, but in the 2000s, in the 2007 wave of blockades, you know, all these blockades were kind of like semi-permanent. You, know, you, you can easily just lift it up. It's more like a toll gate than, than a blockade, if you can see. So a lot of, even then, there were a lot of very strange things I've observed. Um, in the area at that time. So when I found out much later that Ajang started working for the company, I, I actually wasn't surprised. Yeah, I mean, I was sad. I was like, shit. But um, I wasn't surprised at all, actually. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I think all of us, when you watch the film, it looks so immense, the the struggle that they are facing, you know, uh, you know, from the government, from the loggers, from the gangsters, <laughs> from other community. You know, it, it is uh, quite a big, uh, you know, thing to have to face. Yeah, I think also, like, we need to understand also it's not as black and white as what we think a struggle is. Um, I mean, the struggle has been going on for a long time. You know, it's been going on since the 80s, since 87. And, and of course, various strategies, you know, were employed, you know, people really full on at first, you know, and you can see it fizzling out, and then, you know, there were attempts to revive the struggle. You know, it, different things were tried, different strategies were adopted, and, and you can see that by then, when I was there, people are very disheartened, really. You know, like they they fought for so long, uh, there were no results, um, and by the time I was there, I don't see any primary rainforest left anymore. Like the only forests left are this are these secondary rainforests that have gone through probably seven cycles of logging, mm. um, and and it's just waiting to be completely clear felt for for tim for for pulp paper plantations and palm oil plantations. Um, so, so there is a sense of um, of loss, um, of loss of hope among the community, and and that really felt like it was like a, you know, let's just get this one more go and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, Gap. Uh, I think just you le cakap dalam bahasa yang you rasa comfortable. I will. I will try to translate, or Chitu will help. Uh. So, uh, Gap. Uh, What's your response to uh, what Chitu say? Yang, you know, Ajang Q pun, you know, macam mereka pun yeah. rasa macam sudah lemah sikit, uh, joint company. Maybe you can actually explain the context so people faham mm. uh, masalah yang mereka hadapi dan kenapa mungkin mereka uh, sampai buat begini. Yeah. Ha, hello. Ah, dah, dah, dah. Okay. Uh, selamat pagi. Oh, tengah hari dah. Uh, sekarang ni, in nowadays, uh, kerajaan negeri Sarawak uh, very smart. Instead of they themselves against the Penan, so they have their own team, which is uh, comprised of the Penan people. Yeah, this team will fight against the Penan. I mean the pro-government team uh, from the pen Penan on community. So, kalau is, if, if the Tuai Rumah or Headman doesn't agree with the government that just remove him and they appoint the new one. So that's how is uh, that's how they uh, melemahkan uh. weekend the uh, Penan struggle. Mm. Even though the Penan uh, quite special mm. compared to the another tribe in Sarawak. Mm. I mean they have a very strong support from the Bruno Menser. Mm. And but still you know Still, the, the, the strongest one is, of course, lah, the state government. All the resources, all the administrative power ada dekat mereka. So, makin kita kuat, dia lagi gunakan semua undang-undang untuk pecah belahkan masyarakat. So, divide and rule, divide and rule. So, until today. So, that's why I, I don't surprise that Ajang Q have no option left but have to choose to work with the company uh, rather than uh, get nothing lah from them. Mm. So that is the situation, lah. not only to the Penan, but every indigenous community in Sarawak. Yeah. Right, so uh, I mean, to, to add to that, I always like, um, th that, that phrase always haunts me from the time I, oh, okay. I, 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 I recorded an interview in Long, Long Belo uh, where the headman said, you know, um, Kami bukan dihasut mm. NGO Primas atau Bruno Mensa, you know. Kami yeah. dihasut perut actually. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 it's it still gives me chills actually when I heard that it was like oh shit, um, and it's true, and and you know there's a reason why people switch camps and all that kind of things because sometimes it really comes down to the point of survival actually. Yeah. Yeah, of course they are not dihasut by uh, NGO, but the thing is, when the NGO know the story. They will come to help. Mm. 
Yeah, because uh, that's, that's what usually happens. Like, uh, if you see, there was a list of uh, people who were not allowed to go into Sarawak. They were mostly like activists from Semenanjung. You know, uh, they were then not allowed to go into Sarawak because they were said to be instigators. And then people like Harrison Ngau uh, and Sarawak activists were not allowed to go out because they say you're talking bad about the country. So all kinds of means is used to um, weaken the struggle of the indigenous, you know, from uh, you know, creating uh, camps within themselves, you know. Uh, their, their leaders, uh, if they don't listen to the government, are just uh, thrown away or replaced. Yeah, and... Yeah, it's an uh, immense struggle. So, um, Gap, uh, your second film. Now you are new generation, huh? from the very retro, you know, in the jungle, jungle. Now you drive high luck, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, maybe um, just to connect with just now. Why are you still, uh, you know, in the struggle? The hassle, lah, you know. Uh, all this, all this, uh, you know. So much your challenge. Why are you still doing this? Something is wrong that happens in front of your eyes. But kamu tak boleh buat apa-apa. You can't do anything. Bagi saya itu bukan saya. So mengapa saya tengok benda tu salah dan saya teringin nak bertindak? Itu mungkin saya lain daripada orang lain di dalam community saya. So gap for gap is like there's no such thing as not doing anything. He He's someone that will want to do something and respond. Yeah. When the company, ah, bila company datang uh, ke kampung saya, dia bermula dengan timber license. So dia ambil balak saja. So tanah masih kita nampak di depan. Sekarang, start dari 1998, They convert this uh, timber license to palm oil plantation uh, license, and the same company own it. So, bila mereka tanam sawit, mereka terus ambil tanah. Tidak ada uh, discussion, tidak ada negotiation. So, the negotiation is just like mereka panggil kita datang, mereka explain, suruh kita setuju. There is no two-way communication yang betul-betul. Then, Dan, they are so powerful. So, when I realize, macam saya bila saya sedar semua ni salah, saya tidak mau diam diri. Dan, saya kena bergerak, berusaha. Sebab so, dalam tadi filem saya kata tahun 2005, saya sudah mula berbisik-bisik dengan saudara Mara. Kita kena berjuang. Kita tak boleh diam. Ini soal hidup dan mati kita di negara kita sendiri. <coughs> Takkanlah kita nak ada maikat saja sebagai uh, bukti kita warga negara Malaysia, uh, anak sawak. Orang kumpul duit berjuta-juta bertantan dari tempat kita. Kita tengok saja. Hari-hari sampah mengalir dibuang ke sungai. Kita dekat muara sungai, kampung kita, kita pungut. Takkan begitu saja. Orang tua dulu hantar kita ke sekolah bukan untuk jadi bodoh. Saya cakap sampai saya cakap macam tu. Kita kena bertindak. Apapun halangan kita kena hadapi. So uh, manusia macam saya ni mungkin bukan nak kata saya ni hebat lah tak. Minta maaf ya. Cuma saya seorang dalam sat, satu komuniti yang sangat besar. Dan saya perlu tarik lagi orang. Ini di sini juga satu cabaran besar. Dan uh, in Punan Bar Society, kita ada kasta. Tadi dalam filem you tengok ada satu struktur uh, clearing tadi itu yang jadi kubur aristokrat tu. Saya bukan dari uh, kasta aristokrat. Saya dari commoners. So macam macam mana saya nak mempengaruhi mempengaruhi orang lain? supaya bersetuju dengan saya. Sedangkan yang sangat powerful ini aristokrat dan 
mereka pro company dan kerajaan. Tapi saya tak mau mengalah. Start dari 2005, hidup saya sudah mengalami banyak kesusahan, banyak cabaran. Tapi saya tak mau berundur tidak sama sekali. Saya ingat kekuatan saya ialah bila saya ingat sejarah lama. In all days, my great grandparent, my apa orang cakap moyang saya dulu, mereka hidup semasa zaman head hunting mempertahankan hak kami. Mereka tak lari. So macam mana pula saya dengan mudah surrender hak saya dengan company dan kerajaan yang sangat korup ini? Nah, itu yang menjadi sumber kekuatan saya. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, just a little bit of a summary. Uh, so um, when the the at first there was logging on the land, and after the, after the logging, all the trees went. Instead of going away, then plantations came. You know, and then um, what happened was a uh, gap saying that they never actually asked for permission. They just asked you to meet, and then asked you to agree to um, to give them the permission to do this. And uh, he, he 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 felt like um, his parents didn't send him to school for him to just see this happen. You know, and uh, then after that um, he decided to uh, start to bring awareness and uh, kind of uh, organize his community. But uh, in his community, he, there, there is a caste system from before, yeah. and he's not from that ruling caste. The ruling caste is more the one that is uh, pro-company and giving permission. So uh, it was kind of a struggle, but um, yeah, Gap didn't give up. Uh, he feel that uh, it's not uh, in the vein or, or the spirit of his ancestors, the headhunters, who were uh, the ones that would defend their uh, village and their land regardless. Yeah. Nak lagi? Ada lagi? Tapi gap macam sama saja kan 20 tahun. <laughs> ah, For 20 yeah. years, it feels like the same strategy. Um, where they they come to your land and then, you know, then the 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 people will launch, will, will start a lawsuit, akan saman. Lepas hmm. tu proses saman tu 20 tahun, 25, you know, 20 lebih tahun. By the time dah proses mahkamah dah siap dah, balak dah ambil you know, uh, balak sudah ambil, uh, plantation sudah masuk, yeah. and then proses tu memang tak boleh reverse sudah. Yeah. Macam sama je. Ya, yeah, for uh, kita punya kes, uh, kes mahkamah is the last option. Kita sudah melalui negotiation, kita sudah report to the authority, the relevant authority, kosong tak ada balasan semua tak tak ada jawapan yang kita boleh harap and i even join the national inquiry suhakam back in the 2011 sudah semua kita bagi tahu dengan panel semua saya kena soal panel dengan bukti-bukti yang ada so when the suhakam come out with the report again tiada apa-apa berlaku so Kita dilayan macam bukan rakyat di negara sendiri. So, yang mereka lupa, ini yang sangat merisaukan kita yang selama ini berlaku. Ya. Sebenarnya, kes tanah ni dia pertembungan dua naratif yang berbeza. Kerajaan kata ini pembangunan. Kita kena terima. Dan bagi kita, pihak orang asal indigenous people kita mempertahankan hak kita sebab itu hak kita dan Sarawak Land Court menjamin hak NCR itu dia section 5 subsection 2 clearly stated there how to prove NCR section 5 subsection 2 it is in the court uh, uh, in the Sarawak Land Court sorry so Kerajaan just ignore this uh, provision. They replace it with section 6. Kalau you mau tanah, you minta. Itu section 6. To empower the state government to give land to the landless uh, Sarawakian. But kita bukan landless, kita ada tanah. Itu yang tak, tak, tak sesuai. Di sana dia banyak konflik. So, 
bagi kita apa yang kita warisi ini dari dulu kita tak ambil harta orang kita ada sempadan yang jelas dengan kampung sebelah dan tanah kita adalah juga kehidupan kita budaya bahasa dan saya pernah cakap dalam setiap satu hektar tanah tu ada tumbuh ada tumbuh tumbuhan ada pokok yang nama dia bahasa saya kalau tu semua dah hilang bahasa saya hilang budaya saya hilang you can go to the settlement area in bakun deh bakun settlement area you can ask the young one what is the, the the fruit name in your language the tree name in your language what is the plant name in your language i dare to say uh, almost everybody say ah oh, tidak tahu ini yang berlaku dan ini yang perlu diketahui oleh mainstream society not simply because we want to tahan tanah like they always uh, sindir us uh, they, mereka selalu sindir kami eh hey, you tahan tanah sampai 5000 hektar 10000 hektar buat apa tak diusahakan betul tapi saya nak tanya dia balik apa tugas kerajaan nak rampas tanah ke nak develop tanah untuk bantu uh, bangsa uh, rakyat sendiri nanti bercakap mengenai pembasmian kemiskinan nanti bercakap mengenai menghalang penyerahan orang luar bandar ke bandar dan akhirnya di bandar ada macam urban poverty apa semua ah gelandangan ini semua statement-statement politik mereka tapi tindakan berbeza dan kita kena ingat land grabbing di Sarawak juga adalah masalah Malaysia sebab ia menyuburkan rasuah salah guna kuasa it involve corruption and mis misuse of power by the authority macam kes kami dia mereka paksa bukan kami saja banyak mereka paksa kita sampai ke mahkamah kalau tak kita dapat nothing kosong ini yang berlaku di Sarawak very long but okay so what shall i there's a two different contestations uh, one is the government the government saying that oh the people are anti development just want to de defend their land and you know keep it for themselves whereas for the indigenous no this is our identity you know we know every single plant uh, and the names of the plants compared to say uh, the indigenous that have been resettled and don't have land the young people don't even know the name of their plants you know so they lost their language they lose their culture and for the indigenous is a matter of survival you know and it's their right uh, and this is what uh, the big conflict is the non recognition of uh, that this is uh, indigenous right and uh, is this is their life in short but uh, maybe now i want to just open it up uh, to the to the group anybody wants to say anything from what you have seen how you felt or you have questions for the two of them anybody go ahead um just curious you know if if the indigenous people really did have control over development in their area what what form of development would they themselves wish to see uh no we don't have any control no, if if kalau uh, if you all control uh what would you do what kind of development you want yes people uh, yeah we also want development like uh palm oil but it must benefit us because we also want road link to our kampong from town <laughs> but with our how to say that uh, dengan cara kita lah uh, in our own way uh, in our own way not based on the uh, company approach lah uh. the, what company one is if they are given 10000 hectares of land they will bulldoze the entire 10000 hectares but for us we must retain some forest but that is very important for us we also as a citizen of this world we also uh, realize that we have a climate change problem so on like that so for me the development must be uh, from our perspective also not the, like today 
they decided that it in Kuching, they came to our place, just force us to accept it. We don't want that. Yeah. Is that right? Actually, actually if I can jump in with an, yeah, an example, sure. actually. Um, I, I think there's a general perception that um, the indigenous peoples are very anti-development. Mm -hmm. And I, that's, that's not true at all. Um, I, I just want to bring in an example from when I was in Papua New Guinea, um, working with a indigenous community there, um, who have recently at that time, this was in 2005, who had recently at that time won a lawsuit against a Malaysian logging company, yeah. Samling. Um, they've, they've, they've won like 150 million US dollars from that lawsuit or something. And, and with that money, they decided, you know what? Um, we are going to do our own logging. Um, and, and they set up a logging enterprise. But in a sustainable manner that, that works for them, that generates a, you know, sufficient income for them where they, can, where, where they can bring in their own development with the money that they make. And how this looked like was that they I mean, they've got like tens of thousands of hectares of forests, of untouched forests. Um, and what, what they've done is that they've put aside 100, he 100 hectares, and this 100 hectares is just for logging. And within this 100 hectares, every year you're only allowed to log a hectare. And you have to selectively log you know, only the largest, the largest trees from this 100 hectares, and from this single hectare every year, which is a lot which is a lot of logs, enough to serve the community for their own use, for export, for, for, to just generate income for themselves. And then once you're done this year, you move on to the next parcel. And, and you let the, the earlier log parcel regenerate itself. And, and you just move on, rotate within 100 hectares over 100 years. And, and they've been doing that. Um, and they're still doing that now. And they're doing it very successfully. And you know, and they're making a ton of money from that and yeah. and the forest is still intact. So yeah. so these are things that can happen. I think maybe it's about self determination. Yeah. And also this uh, word development is a bit loaded. If uh, they are already living in a ideal society, <laughs> there's no need to change, you know what I'm saying? In a way, yeah, that when you say development, you say orang cakap pembangunan, oh, kena ada uh, you know, some kind of uh, business going in, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, a factory being built, you know. Uh, not necessarily um, it. Maybe it's like, what kind of values do you think you still retain? Yeah, maybe that is a, uh, uh, dalam, yeah. What kind of values do you think uh, you retain in a community? Yeah. Uh, okay. <coughs> Uh, sebelum tu saya mau tambah yang tadi. Okay. Di Sarawak sekarang uh, kita famous dengan tagline negeri kaya rakyat miskin. Jangan jangan lupa tu. Dan ini menunjukkan kegagalan polisi pembangunan tanah kerajaan negeri Sarawak. Tetapi mereka tak akui. Ini ini uh, Sarawak sekarang. So tadi anda tanya? Yeah yeah no uh, there was another one but yeah it's, uh, kita boleh uh, we can just also discuss this that. Uh, but you, the, you nak cakap lagi tentang kemiskinan Maybe yeah. mm. Kemiskinan di Sarawak semakin teruk So And now the Our new enemies is carbon trading uh, After land grabbing uh, First logging Then land grabbing for palm oil plantation Now Carbon trading But the JPS government They are very proud of it it can generate new billion of billion of ringgit for state uh, even, uh, revenue, they said. But no riot uh, the benefit from it, especially us, the indigenous people. The moment they gazet your land is as part of the carbon trading area, finish. You have you cannot enter the, the area anymore. You cannot even chop very small tree like this because they get paid from the international uh, body that is the the real enemies now for us the indigenous people but our government are very proud of it and this is why Sarawak again I said negeri kaya rakyat miskin yeah the benefit never trickle down to nah. the people who own the land 
Yeah. So uh, I know it sounds a bit uh, grim and you know uh, depressing, but uh, maybe just tell us, um, you know, I mean, like how these stories uh, are kind of uh, important or helping your struggle in any way. Do you see uh, what there is an importance to still at least document, you know, like Ajang Q, the Penan struggle, and then now your struggle. How how why are these stories uh, important uh, to be heard and seen? Hello. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. It it seems like a serious, as if you know, like a like a impossible uphill struggle that has no hope, but. For me, as in any other form of activism, I, I always feel that it's important to tell these stories because you know, like, no one really knows what's, know what's going on, and and the more you stay silent, the more you you don't talk about it, um, the more ruthless the perpetrators become, mm. um, and as as hopeless as it sounds, right, we are just holding back perpetrators. I think it's important mm. to hold back perpetrators. Yeah, and then maybe get how has the Balui Kanukai been used in your work? Uh, yeah, it it is very important for the mainstream society to know the truth, because TV satu, TV dua, TV tiga, all a government propaganda uh, news. You guys are feeding with this uh, government side of story. You never know what is really happened. What is the the real story? So, you guys, uh, awesome people, came here today, to see the first-hand story of the struggle. It's nothing to do with the anti-development. No. Uh, what the, the proof is already very clear in Sarawak now. Negeri kaya rakyat miskin. Where is the so the so-called uh, land development? It's not benefit us. It make them become rich and rich and richer. If the how to say that uh, the list of um, richest Malaysian uh, based on the the stolen money, I think top five is Sarawakian <laughs> from this the, uh, this timber industry. And one more thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make it very clear today. There is. The logging company are very proud to say that they build the road to the kampong kampong in the interior part of Sarawak, in my like my village, Belaga, Baram. So the people have easy access to town. So the the government can have easy access to to send to to send a, a government officer to reach out to the uh, rural community. They build this road not because of us, because of their business. It's nothing to do with, they want to help us. But they calculate the cost to build this road, and it, the amount is very big, 100 million, 200 million. And they put it in the record of the CSR. This is brutal liar. If they calculate how many million that they steal from us, when the tree that they chop from our ancestral land, it becomes deficit. Please understand this. This is one of the propaganda used by the state government to defend the logging company. They said, we are very proud to say, we have built road in entire rural area in Sarawak. It costs us 100 million for every company, which is bullshit. Those timber are from our ancestral land. Please calculate also how many million of hectares, uh, hect uh, million of tons of timbers has been chopped down. They steal from us. That's why I said it become deficit. Instead of the proud of to say, like somebody said, hundred mil over million, they spend to build road. It's not for us. It's not. It's there for, for them to steal our log. Yeah. Thank you. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, last question maybe, yeah. I think 
I, 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 you make a very good point that we need to show that the economics, that actually you lose much more, and then how, what benefits they're bringing in. So I think there needs more de development in that area for the advocacy. But the other question I want to ask is, you know, when you show these films to your community, what sort of pushback are you able to get from here? Uh, especially now that the young are being put through an education system, is telling them living in the forest is backward, it's not no future, and the way forward is modern living, moving into uh, modern lifestyles. How are these firms beginning to reverse or push back and create more support in, in, in um, establishing uh, justice and dignity for your people? Yeah, it is the state government of Sarawak who are talking about sustainability, not us. Because our life is already sustainable. But now, when they send a team from the company and forest department, uh, went to our longhouse, that, that teach us sustainability. Which is, to me, is very ridiculous. We are the one who teach them about sustainability. As you, as Dr. Kohn said, okay. You want to develop our land, but make sure it is us to teach you how to develop our land. Mm. It's okay to live in the forest as long as we support whatever development initiative by the government, if that development benefit us. But now, what they call development has not bring any benefit to us. We are victim of the development, and it's proven in Sarawak. Yeah, I don't care if the people said uh, you still retain a hundred years ago way of life. I don't care. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it seems to be very slow They accept this kind of idea. Because, you know, Dr. Khan, now there's even two, two years old, three years old already have their own gadget, you know? They're more like to play a game than uh, go to join the father or mother are going to uh, jungle and learn how to survive in the jungle and make use of the uh, jungle product. <laughs> yeah, that is the problem now. But we, for me, I still uh, try to give them more uh, knowledge on our traditional life, even though we want to uh, maju like others. Lah. I think uh, the the film itself has been uh, used, right? Uh, yeah. To um, they have this kola adat where they are trying to uh, maybe talk a bit about kola adat and then the film and stuff like that. Really. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kola yeah, adat is uh, it was initiated by my friend, my colleague, Michael Jock. Uh, the purpose of kola adat is because uh, we. We want to educate our young generation about our adat. As I said, it's nothing wrong for you to know your adat, even though you are live in KL here, walking walk in KL here. But as long as you are indigenous people from Sarawak, from the interior part of Sarawak, you must know your adat because that is a part of your identity. Uh, that is how your great grandparent raised you up. Yeah, to be beradat in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The um, this what I know is that uh, like for example, after we made the film and uh, uh, Gap and uh, the scholar Ada has screened it, uh, a lot of communities got very um, inspired by Gap's story, and they also uh, dance it. <laughs> right? Betul yeah. uh, I so want to do the story of my community, yeah. and you know, kind of like that lah, a little bit, kan? Uh, yeah. They feel a bit more semangat that you know they're not alone. If Gap can do it, I think that is the beauty of like stories like this. 
because uh, you see that story is really gap story. Him doing something for his community and uh, that's uh, it's inspiring, you know. So what happens like when usually when we have um, films from uh, outside made by like say a foreign producer, their concerns are different. But when we started to make the film, uh, it, the starting point was how are we going to uh, inspire. Uh, our own community and you know local. So when we discussed it, then okay, gap. Let's just feature gap because uh, we need to inspire the young to follow his footsteps, you know, and to do what he's doing. And also, he needs a gang. <laughs> we need he needs more support, you know. Okay, uh, we kind of passed time, but uh, there was a question uh, behind Nadira. Do you want to make a comment or say something? Yeah. Hi, kopi uh, senangan. Um, yeah, terima kasih. Uh, thank you for your film. Uh, saya, soalan saya ialah um, sebagai seorang pembikin film aktivis juga kan um, sebab sekarang ni di Sarawak ada banyak macam uh, ada TVS ada semua yang ni institusi kerajaan juga yang uh, mulai uh, apa ni uh, bagi uh, sokongan kepada film ke tempatan tapi bagi uh, kamu sendiri kan kamu ada ke gap macam do you feel that uh, you can get along with the other filmmakers in Sarawak uh, apakah macam uh, Sambutan yang didapat uh, antara filmmaker filmmaker di, uh, di Sarawak juga. Sebab yang paling penting juga yang kamu uh, dirasa yang kamu ada ni sokongan juga lah. Uh, she asked about um, now there's a TV Sarawak, there's yeah, a new yeah. station, local station. Yeah. So how's this film and the reception of the film community towards him and the film? Uh, kita apa yang kita buat ni sangat tidak popular sebab kita uh, seolah-olah kita melawan kerajaan walaupun <coughs> keperluan dia itu sangat kita sangat perlu buat benda macam ni uh, menyentuh pasal TVS TVS adalah propaganda GPS dia, dia tak akan tak akan terima dia, dia tak akan terima so, apa yang dia nak you buat filem yang untuk mempromosi dia punya fahaman politik ya tapi sesama aktivis di Sarawak kita sudah cuba uh, tayang di beberapa beberapa tempat uh, kita dapat komen yang positif daripada audien kita uh, malah ada yang kata kita kena buat filem lagi selain daripada ini uh, sebab semangat uh, melawan di Sarawak itu ada di setiap orang cuma tiada yang berani ke depan. So, tidak ramai yang buat kerja macam ni di Sarawak. So, ya ialah kita tahu uh, cabaran dia sangat kuat. Macam uh, pengalaman saya sendiri, uh, saya tak banyak kawan sebenarnya. <laughs> di antara aktivis di Sarawak, saya boleh kira dengan jari saya bilangan orang yang mau berkawan dengan saya. So, sangat tidak popular lah. Seperti yang Saudara Citu cakap ni ada seorang pemimpin penan tu dulu dia melawan sekarang dia kerja company. That is the always the scenario. They end up to work with the opponent. Nah, tapi bagi saya selagi saya tak berjaya saya tak tak takkan berundur. Dan saya masih dapat sokongan walaupun kawan saya sedikit di antara filmmaker, uh, di antara aktivis-aktivis dan kerana kesungguhan saya lah saya kenal dengan ramai orang yang baik-baik termasuk dari FFN, saudara Albert Bansa, termasuk ada juga kawan-kawan yang uh, di Sarawak sana yang sentiasa keep, keep in touch lah dengan saya. Tapi dari segi uh, media yang pro kerjaan tu memang mereka tidak akan berkawan dengan kita. Ya. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just uh, responding to uh, the question related is um, there are very few um, also filmmakers who are Sarawakian filmmakers who are working with activists to tell their own stories. There's a kind of a lim uh, very few. Everybody's coming from outside. And then, you know, uh, so that's something that we really need to build. A uh, uh, filmmaking community in Sarawak that will also support stories uh, from the community, not just make stuff uh, for commercial TV about culture, etc. And uh, and to be courageous, uh, according to Gap, um, everyone in Sarawak uh, feels the struggle, 
but not everyone is courageous enough to come out and be the front face uh, of it. So, um, yeah, I think um, we have to end now, but uh, we can give more support to people like Gab and the activists in Sarawak, maybe by just sharing the story, yeah. telling them what you heard today, that the narrative that he has, uh, we need to strengthen it, you know? It's not that they're anti-development, but it's now a fight, fight for survival, no? It's a fight for the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the dying, poverty, uh, you know, uh, and everything else is uh, happening there. So it's a fight for survival. Um, yeah, and with that, I think, thank you, Chi and uh, Gap and you all. Thank you very much.